The State Fair of Texas will have enhanced security for its final week after a shooting injured three people. It happened around 745 last night in the Tower Building at Fair Park. Witness video shows people rushing to get out of the fairgrounds when the gunfire erupted. Many others hiding for safety. Police arrested the suspect minutes after the shooting, and he is now charged with aggravated assault. Fox First Rebecca Butcher spoke with witnesses and a State Fair rep about the security concerns. Well, usually this time of day, thousands of attendees would be at the State Fair of Texas, but on Sunday morning, it was only vendors. The fair didn't open until 1.45 p.m. Sunday. After Dallas police say one man shot at another, injuring three people, two men and a woman. All of a sudden, there was four gunshots. It was pow, 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 pow. And then there was about a, a minute delay, and then there was another gunshot. People fled. The shooting took place in the Tower Building, which is a food court. Witnesses, some of them Fox 4, employees recorded the scene as Dallas police evacuated the park. Food court vendor Jessica Metlin was working at the time. People were jumping over my over my counters. I was pulling people to safety. I was pulling people behind the counters. All of the victims are expected to recover. At least one appears to be an innocent bystander. Dallas police say the suspect, 22-year-old Cameron Turner, ran from the scene, but officers located Turner and took him into custody. A gun was recovered. He's charged with aggravated assault. Fox 4 News producer Cassinda Crump was at the state fair with her sister when they heard gunfire. I like literally saw the smoke clearing from, you know how gunpowder or gun smoke happens. The two were inside the food court ordering a drink when they ducked down trying to get to safety. Out of nowhere, everybody just starts running and then we're trying to get out the place and people just trampled us. It was just, it was chaos. They actually ran over my body. A lot of people. Nisha Crump says she had footprints all over her body. Someone stopped them and said, let them get up, you know, and so we got up. It had to be an angel. The fair prohibits weapons on the property. However, its policy does make an exception for licensed gun owners. We don't allow weapons in the State Fair of Texas. However, we understand that Texans have rights to carry their weapons. And so we have a middle ground where those that have a license to carry are allowed to come in with a concealed weapon. It is not yet clear how the suspect got a gun onto the fairgrounds. The fair has an open gate weapons detection system. When people walk through, it detects if there are any weapons on them and notifies the security team to then do a deeper inspection at that point in time. The fair is planning to enhance security during the final week of operations. We do plan for us to have a heightened security presence, not only on the perimeter of the grounds, but throughout the fairgrounds for the remainder of the 2023 State Fair of Texas. Meanwhile, Nisha shared her views on the fair's gun policy. If I had known that they could carry weapons inside guns, I would not even have gone. But Saturday's shooting didn't stop others from coming in as early as they could on Sunday. Rebecca Butcher, Fox 4 News. We are learning more about the shooting at the State Fair of Texas that wounded three people and injured the suspect. An arrest affidavit says investigators watched video showing Cameron Turner at a concession stand buying water when several men approached him. That started a heated conversation between the men. The affidavit says that's when Turner took out a handgun and fired three to four shots. Fox 4's Alex Alex Boyer shares more about what police are saying happened that night. I just got a hold of that arrest warrant affidavit and in it Cameron Turner says he was trying to defend his family and says he went into defensive mode and began to shoot when he felt threatened by a group of men. We're learning new details about the circumstances leading up to a triple shooting at the state fair Saturday night that sent innocent fairgoers running for safety. It happened inside a crowded food court. An arrest warrant affidavit says witnesses saw a man later identified as Cameron Turner shoot three to four times. We are deeply saddened uh, by those events and, uh, and thankful uh, for the recovery of all those directly impacted by that. The report says investigators watched video footage of the incident. Turner is seen buying water from a concession stand. He was by himself, his family not next to him. In the background, several males can be seen approaching Turner from a distance. When he turns around to leave, one of the victims approaches him. Both males appear to exchange some words. The report states the victim had nothing in his hands and did not reach for anything when Turner pulled out a handgun and began shooting. In the process, two other people were shot.
we ask everybody to be fair aware. We do that internally with all of our uh, direct employees and our extended employees to be aware. The report states Turner ran but was arrested by two state troopers and a Dallas police officer in the area. The handgun was also recovered. The fair has an open gate weapons detection system. The fair prohibits weapons on the property. However, its policy does make an exception for licensed gun owners. The arrest report did not state if Turner has a license to carry. It's also not yet clear how the suspect got a gun into the fairgrounds. At the state fair on Monday, there was an enhanced security presence that will remain in place for the rest of the run. I walked around and I talked to everybody that was waiting in line to, to get into the park and they were just so excited about being here. And a third victim is not cooperating with detectives. The investigation continues. Meanwhile, Turner remains jailed here at the Dallas County Jail, charged with three counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Alex Boyer, Fox 4 News. Dallas police are looking for a driver. Investigators say hit and killed a seven-year-old girl in North Dallas overnight. She died at the scene on 635 near Coit Road. Police sources say the girl and her family were staying at a hotel along the highway and she wandered away from the family. The first car that hit her took off. The second driver stopped. Fox Sports Peyton Yeager talked with investigators. She joins us now live. Peyton. Heather and no arrests in this case. Dallas police tell me the investigation is still in its early stages, but what they do know is at least two vehicles hit that little girl, and right now they are looking for the initial driver who did not stop. We're pushing. If anybody saw something, if anybody know anything, please reach out. Dallas police asking the public's help in finding a driver. Investigators say hit and killed a seven-year-old girl early Monday morning. Just after midnight, police say a white vehicle traveling eastbound on the LBJ service road near Coit Road in North Dallas hit the child who was lying in the middle of the road. The driver of the white vehicle called 911, stopped, and cooperated with responding officers. Detectives determined the child had already been hit at least once prior to the white vehicle and died on scene. She was lying in the roadway. Uh, she was already lying in the roadway when the second driver hit her. Now the department is searching for that initial driver who struck the child and didn't stop. As of Monday, police do not have any description of the vehicle they're looking for. So we are pushing and asking for the community's help that if anyone saw anything, heard anything. Dallas police are also investigating why the seven-year-old was crossing the service road. Police sources tell Fox 4 the little girl's family was staying at a nearby Marriott Residence Inn and she wandered off the property in the middle of the night. We visited the Marriott Monday off 635. From the front, it appears the only two exits are a vehicle gate and the front lobby door. The manager on duty declined to share any comments Monday in an effort to respect the family's privacy. Dallas police also say they are not going to release the child's name due to her age. They also tell us this is an extremely sensitive investigation since they are dealing with a child. And also right now, they really do not know who or what they're looking for. Dallas detectives are looking for the man who pushed a woman out of his vehicle, then drove over her, leaving her critically injured in the street. It happened the morning of October 9th. Fox 4 Sean Rabb has the first images of the suspect's black SUV in this week's trackdown. I'm with Detective Andrew Sear, the assault unit, Dallas Police. We're in the 3600 block of Frank Street, not far from Fair Park. Yes, sir. What happened here October 9th, sir? So the morning October 9th, between 6.50 and 7 a.m., we have our victim, Ms. Whitlock. 45-year-old Stephanie Whitlock. Got in, we believe to be a black BMW X3. Tell me what happened then. Um, she gets in the uh, vehicle with, um, we believe to possibly a black male, goes by the name of Gigi, with potentially two-inch black uh, inch dreads. They drive around. A few minutes later, the vehicle comes back, stops right here. What kind of vehicle is it? Uh, we believe to be a BMW X3, early 2000s model. Video kind of shows that she gets pushed out of the vehicle. She get, gets out, tries to look like to try to get back into the driver's seat door. Um, when she's go running after it, the vehicle takes off, 
she falls, hits her head on the concrete, and appears that the back rear right tire runs over her head. How is she right now? Uh, right now, she's currently in critical condition. There is a potential, based on her injuries, that she may not make it. Okay, I heard you say a street name and the guy with dreads. How do you know this? Uh, we had a witness when we're out here doing their initial investigation who knows her. Um, and she said that she was possibly in the same vehicle with the individual within the hour prior to it. What do you need? We want to talk to this guy. We want to bring justice to this woman. Is Nobody deserves to get run over by a car. You think somebody might recognize the vehicle and know the owner? Absolutely, because um, people have cameras regardless of what street. They may have that ve vehicle popping, showing up down their street, and they may even have that license plate that can help, help identify that car and that driver. How can folks reach Detective Andrew Sear? You can reach me at my city cell at 469-662-9234 or my email andrew.cyr at dallaspolice.gov. If you recognize that black SUV, possibly a BMW SUV, get at Detective Andrew Sear. Help find the driver of that car who ran over a woman here on Frank Street, leaving her for dead. There is anger and disbelief from the family of a 72-year-old Dallas grandmother who was killed inside her home by possible random gunfire. Bullets from outside came in through the window. Fox Wars David Centenary has the murder investigation tonight. David. Yes, yeah, Steve, the 72-year-old grandmother was cooking a family dinner. This was supposed to be just another typical evening, and then multiple bullets came flying through their kitchen. Even at 72 years of age, Paula Rivera never slowed down. She said hi to everybody. She helped everybody. The grandmother lost her life, however, Sunday night due to what her family believes to be random gunfire. And we heard the shots. Rivera's daughter, Maria Becerra, was at their home off Marfa Avenue in South Dallas when two bullets shot through her family's kitchen. One bullet struck her mother while she was cooking dinner. The shot came and she screamed and she grabbed her side and I was like did it hit you like confused and she's like yes call the ambulance and she just collapsed Rivera described as the anchor of her family passed away I can't live life without her I'm so attached to her so attached to her my son is so attached to her he kept screaming don't leave me I need you please don't leave me I need you the Dallas Police Department is investigating the department chose not to answer Fox Force questions Wednesday afternoon about the shooting but Rivera's family says detectives are being transparent. They're like, we're working on it, we're getting footage. Rivera's family says there was a large gathering at a field in their neighborhood when the shooting took place. A large group, uh, probably more than 30, 40 cars. They believe the shooting may have stemmed from that get-together. Just don't get violent. You can see where one of two bullets struck a kitchen chair. You know, we're just all on the floor. We're all on the floor crawling. Rivera and her husband lived with Becerra, her husband and their 10-year-old son. Now, the family's message to the shooter. Have a heart. Have a heart. You took my mom from me. You took all our family's glue. And of course, Dallas Police Department asks if anyone has any information about what may have led to this shooting, any information on who may have been responsible to give them a call. For now, Steve Heather, I'll send it back to you. Tonight, the community came out in force to honor a Fort Worth ISD cafeteria worker who was killed outside her school last week. Hello, everybody. I'm Heather Hayes. And I'm Steve Eager. Yolanda Gibbs was found shot several times outside David K. Sellers Elementary last week. Police say a person of interest in the investigation was found dead last week, but they haven't shared any more. Foxford Blake Hansen was at a vigil tonight in Gibbs' honor. Blake. Yeah, Stephen, Heather, a lot of people here, including students, colleagues, and longtime friends who wanted to share how Yolanda Gibbs impacted their lives. There will be a huge void here at David K. Sellers. As sun set outside David K. Sellers Elementary, the community gathered on the hillside to mourn alongside some of those closest to Yolanda Gibbs. It was just something about that day when I kept calling her and she didn't answer. Police responded to the school last Wednesday morning before the start of class for a report of a shooting. They found Gibbs shot multiple times. She was later pronounced dead at a hospital. Two days later, police announced a person of interest in the murder was found dead. They have not shared that person's name. Police say whoever killed Gibbs knew her, but didn't elaborate on the connection. 
Thursday, the focus was not on what happened, but on the woman they lost. When I first got here, I asked, I said, well, what is your name? And she said, just call me lovely. I said, oh, okay. I ain't mad at y'all call you lovely. Gibbs spent decades at Sellers Elementary interacting with students in her work in the school cafeteria. Colleagues and friends remembered her for a big heart and her personality. Yolanda was a mess. Y'all know she was. She was a whole piece of work. If you met her, you, you, you didn't meet nobody else like her. So as the many who gathered outside Sellers Thursday released balloons in Gibbs' honor, they remembered how she touched those she came across. Many times we forget that that, that first person that see our kids, if it's handing them the milk or handing them the juice or whatever, how much that impacts their life. We asked police today if there was anything new to share on the investigation, but did not hear back. Stephen Heather. All right, Blake, thank you.